Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I thought it would be fun to bring you guys along with me today on a little bookshop tour haul. I'm going to go to a couple of different types of bookshops. So I'm going to go to a larger bookstore such as a Barnes and Noble or a Books A Million, something like that. And then I am going to tour a small privately owned indie bookshop, which is personally my favorite type of shop to explore, but also they tend to be a little bit harder to find. So today I'm going to go to a larger bookstore. I think I'm going to be going to Books A Million and we'll check it out. I'll see if I find anything that I would like to add to my library, which is ever growing. And I honestly probably don't really need much more <laughs> but it's really hard to go to a bookstore and not leave with anything so I'm going to bring you along with me this week as we explore some fun bookshops I really love this bell coffee mug though and the haunted mansion it's like all my favorite things this <laughs> on books Okay, so I'm done book shopping and I'll show you guys in a little bit what I got, but this is exciting. This is my first time ever having Chipotle. Is that how you say it? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm saying it wrong all the time. So I got a bowl and Emily got a burrito. We're gonna try it out. YouTube first. I mean, YouTube eats first. YouTube eats first <laughs> before I even get a chance to taste it. So it's brown rice cheese salsa chicken black beans and guac and it looks really good all right we're gonna try the first bite it's really good <laughs> so i just wanted to show you a little my air freshener that's what me and mom look like when i drive her <laughs> that's me driving so cute and that's mom really scared I don't know why, because I'm a good driver, but <laughs> it used to smell like pineapple. That was two years ago. <laughs> so, uh, anyway. You're funny, Emily. I know I am. <laughs> All right. Mom, tell them how your chipotle okay. was. So, this is what's left, and I have been really eating for like, what, 15, 20 minutes? <laughs> yeah, and half of it's on my car floor because mom <laughs> threw it on my car floor. Literally just picked it up and threw it down. I did not. There was one little piece of rice that looked weird, and I threw it on her floor. So disrespectful. <laughs> she caught me doing it. So I'm getting a free car detailing now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this could feed me probably for three days. This is like so much food. I'm done. I can't do anymore. It was good though. A good first try at Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle, right? Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? We were practicing before I started vlogging because I've been saying it wrong. What was I saying? Chipotle. <laughs> it's close. And then Chipotle. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I have such great vocabulary. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay, guys, so I am back and I have my bag here. I'm going to show you guys what I got. It really wasn't very much but they had some really good deals that I was really, really surprised about. So let me take these out and I will show you what I ended up getting. Okay, so I always want to add classics to my library at home and I love children's classics and I most especially love the books that have this type of a cover. You can see this was marked down to $3. This is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And these editions are from London. Octorus Holdings is the name of the publishing company. I am not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but they make these beautiful covers. So I have The Wind in the Willows, and I also have the Swiss Family Robinson, which I do not currently have this. This is by Johan David Wiss. And these books, when I went to check out, 
rang up as a dollar fifty. <laughs> so I was like, let me go see if there are more editions of these children's books because again, the covers are beautiful. I have a couple here now. I think I have The Secret Garden and Peter Pan currently. So I was really excited about that. So I went back and they also had Treasure Island, which look at that cover. They're just gorgeous. And Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. And then I also ended up picking up The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. And let me just show you, I'm gonna show you all of the covers very closely so you can just get a full appreciation for how beautiful they are. I just love them so much. I think they're so gorgeous. And again, they were $1.50 each. So not a bad deal at all. And then I found one other book that was very inexpensive. It was marked down to $5.97. And this is The Mermaid and Mrs. Hancock. Um, it's by Emo. You know, they covered the author's name with the sticker. That is not cool. Hold on. Oh no, I hope, I hate it when they put a sticker on a beautiful cover and then you have a hard time taking it off and you end up ruining the cover of the book. The author is Omegan Hermes Gower. Gower. I am probably saying it all wrong, but there's her picture. She's very pretty. <laughs> and, ooh. And look at the inside pages. They're so beautiful. Can you tell that I do judge a book by its cover? <laughs> I really do love a nice cover and I thought this might be a really great summer read. Add it to the mermaid books that I would like to read this summer. So those are the books that I ended up buying at Books A Million very inexpensively so I made out great. And then I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about my experience at the store. So there are so many books in a large store like that. It's rather large. It feels a little bit overwhelming sometimes. And there were a lot of employees there. I think there were about five or six people working this store, which I don't understand because bookstores don't have a tendency to be overly crowded. And also there were a handful of people in the store, but I felt like the employees were all gathered around the desk and just chatting and talking and hanging out so that really wasn't very beneficial to the customers although I did hear one employee helping somebody out and directing them in the romance section helping them find a book for their girlfriend or something I really prefer a more intimate experience in a bookshop so we will try again another day this week there is a bookshop it's a little distance from my home but it looks really cute from the online picture and really quaint and I'm excited to try that out so I will bring you guys along for that as well and I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing my haul today I'm really really excited about the books that I found today and it was lots of fun bringing you guys with me good morning guys we are headed to another bookstore today we're checking out a small indie bookshop in a really quaint little town so I'm excited to bring you guys along <laughs> I have Emily with me and we're picking up my mom and we're going to head on over to a small bookstore Okay, so that was an epic fail because the bookstore wasn't open, even though their website says they're open and everywhere online it says they're open and Facebook says they're open, they're not open. So that was disappointing and we are headed back home. Okay, so that was incredibly disappointing to say the least. And I have to say my one gripe with independently owned small shops, just like Main Street USA type of stores, is they are unreliable with their shop hours. And it's so frustrating. And I'm only going by my own experience, so it may be different where you live, but I live in New Jersey and I go to Pennsylvania and New York rather often, although I haven't been to New York in quite some time due to COVID, but you would never see that problem in New York, obviously, if you're paying what you need to pay for rent in Manhattan. I'm sure you're keeping your shop open as much as possible, but in my small town and in surrounding towns, and most especially in Pennsylvania, I have literally seen people write with crayon on a scrap piece of paper, not gonna make it today, try back Tuesday, had to go to the doctors, maybe I'll be back later, like just ridiculous, <laughs> so unprofessional. And this bookstore that I went to this morning, first of all, we had to drive quite a distance away, so it took up 
you know, a good part of my day and time is valuable. Nobody wants to drive far away and pay a boatload of money in gas just to go somewhere that's not even open. And I think that these places need to understand that you need to update all of your uh, social media links. You need to update your website. You really, really have to let the public know what your real hours are. I understand it's COVID and there's a lot going on and a lot of small businesses are going out of business, but you cannot advertise to the world that you're open at say 9 a.m. in the morning when you're actually either not open at all or not opening until their voicemail answering machine said they're going to be opening at 1.30 this afternoon, which is such a weird and random time, but why not advertise that and save your customers a lot of aggravation so anyway i don't know that i'll ever be going back to this particular bookshop again i'm going to maybe try another one and maybe it'll be next week when i can find time to fit it in my schedule so that's my rant for today okay guys so it is a while later i don't know it's a week maybe two weeks i'm not even sure i've kind of lost all track of time because i haven't really been leaving the house at all but i'm going to venture out today to attempt to visit another small bookshop so we're headed out now it's a little bit of a snowy day and also it is a wednesday morning so i'm hoping there's really not going to be anyone at all there if i find that there are people in the store i probably won't go in because <laughs> i'm super paranoid right now but i'm gonna go check it out and it's a different store than where I attempted to go last time, so this one is a little bit closer. Such an adorable little bookshop and I just want to show you the book that my mom bought before I bring her home because she's actually going to be giving it to me when she finishes it. It's Philippa Gregory Dark Tides and I think I need to get Tidelands. That's the first book so I'm gonna buy that so I have the collection but she bought this. She's going to read it and then she's going to give it to me because it is an autograph. Oh look at the inside pages. It's an autographed copy, which is really cool. And I'll show you the rest when I get in the house. Okay, so I am home and I'm excited to show you what I have in this bag. Such a cute little bookstore. I really, really enjoyed it. It was just nice getting out. The drive was a lot longer than I had anticipated, but it was okay because it was just a nice, long, relaxing drive, which I kind of needed right now, especially since I haven't really been going anywhere or doing much of anything. Just being outside in the car, was nice. So we really enjoyed our time there. The entire time that we were in the bookshop, there was a total of four people that came and left and they were never all in there at the same time. So that was not too bad. I did not feel really very threatened by that. So that was all good. And let me tell you about the books that I ended up purchasing. So the first one is The Hate You Give, and this is by Angie Thomas. I've heard so many great things about this book. Basically, from what I gather, it is about a young adult girl who is black and she lives in a poor neighborhood, but she goes to a prep school. So she kind of sees what both worlds are like. And when she is very young, she witnesses one of her closest friends being murdered by a cop. And obviously it ties into a lot of the violence and the things going on in the world today. And I'm just really interested in reading this story and learning more about it because like I said, I have heard really good things about this book. So I purchased a young adult book and then I also purchased a children's book. This is called Inside Out and Back Again. And this is by 
Banha Lei. I hope I'm, I'm probably saying her last name totally incorrectly, but this won a Newbery Honor Award and it also won the National Book Award. So it seems really, really good. I'm just gonna read you the description on the back. For all the 10 years of her life, Ha has only known Saigon, the thrills of its markets, the joys of its traditions, the warmth of her friends close by, and the beauty of her very own papaya tree. But now the Vietnam War has reached her home. Ha and her family are forced to flee as Saigon falls, and they board a ship headed towards hope. So it sounds really interesting, and I like the way that it's written. So when I was just scrolling through this, it looks as if every day is written kind of as a journal entry throughout the entire book it's written this way so it's almost like you are looking into her diary and i'm really excited to read this as well so that's all i ended up getting because you guys know i have book overload <laughs> going on right now i have plenty of books to read it's still hard to not buy more but i definitely have a lot to choose from right now so i'm trying not to be too obnoxious <laughs> about purchasing books right now. Although I have two more coming from thrift books sometime soon. All of the credits that I had from things that I returned at Christmas have gone directly towards purchasing books. So <laughs> it's just the way it is. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed coming along with me for my bookstore tours. It was a lot of fun bringing you along and sharing my experience. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys prefer? Do you prefer shopping online, going to Amazon, buying used books, going to a large bookstore such as a Barnes and Noble or a Books A Million, or do you like quaint little bookshops? It has always been a dream of mine to own a bookshop. It's just been this ongoing thing that I've wanted to do for a long time now. And I definitely just feel such comfort and warmth and security in a small bookshop. It's one of my favorite places to be. I could literally spend hours in a small bookshop. So that's just the way I feel. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think about that. And I will see you all really soon. I hope you're all doing well. Take care. Bye.